Time to run off to the circus with Jerry Bowen, who has a little jewel of a tail from the big top. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. It is the oldest of youthful fantasies. The show on Earth. Running away to a life in the circus. Playing among the elephants and the acrobats. And more than half a century ago, young Sonny King did just that in the Australian outback. That's Sonny in the lion's cage. That was taken, I think, in Western Australia. My father has all of the seat of my pants, but that's just out of the shot. You don't see that. In the 1940s and 50s, Sonny's father, Mervyn King, was Mr. Circus in Australia. He was the owner and one of the stars of Silver Circus. Ringmaster, horse trainer, lion tamer, and more. It wasn't until Sonny was a teenager that he understood his father's life was unusual. I mean, it was mainly because other people used to say so. You mean your father is a lion tamer? Yeah, 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 so, so what? Mervyn King was a true son of the circus, literally raised under the Australian Big Top, abandoned by his unwed parents and given away to a small traveling circus when he was just six years old. As Mervyn King grew, so did his story, a story his son, an artist, believed was worth telling. Is this uh, a labor of love or a tribute? How do you characterize all of this? Well, it's very much a labor of love. It is a story told in a baker's dozen of detailed dioramas that Sonny created from scratch, from his childhood memories, and now on exhibition at the Craft and Folk Art Museum in Los Angeles. There, in handcrafted miniature, is his father in the lion's cage, just as he looked in the old black and white films that captured his act. There's the jaw-dropping Johnny Zielinski, holding up a trapeze artist with just his teeth, an act he kept doing into his 80s. And the amazing Shipway twins, Olympic-class athletes who ruled the horizontal bars most of the time. And every now and again they'd miss the trick and they'd fly off into the audience and knock about five people out of the seats, but, <laughs> but that was always fun. And this poignant scene, peeking through the back of the big top, a juggler warming up to go on, a clown relaxing, townsfolk ogling these exotic visitors, and the woman in the polka dot dress walking away. Well, this one here is, represents my mother leaving the circus. She left the circus when she was 20, and she took me with her. His mother, Phyllis Perry, was from a famous Australian circus family, a star in her own right, and tired of it all. She figured that uh, there was a better life somewhere, and um, my father didn't know anything else, so he stayed with the circus, that's all he knew. But starting when Sonny was 10 years old, his father pulled him out of boarding school for months at a time to travel the rough and tumble Australian outback with the circus. It was a little boy's fantasy come true. It was a fantasy. It was great. I had my own horse. I'm sure I was very spoiled. I was the boss's son, you know. This is what we think of when we think of the circus today, the greatest show on earth playing to big crowds in big arenas in big cities like Los Angeles. But that is not the circus life that Sonny King remembers. So here we are, rural Australia, and the circus is coming to town. Wagga Wagga. It's a <laughs> big town in Australia. One diorama depicts rural Wagga Wagga, a small town typical of the stops made by Silver Circus. Uh, this is the advance man, and uh, he would go ahead of the show by two weeks and he would put up what they, they called the bills, the posters, advertising the circus coming to town. There was no bigger show, especially in the Australian outback. After the big tent went up, the townspeople would line up and pour in. And so, as he began to create his father's story, he started with the audience. They'll build the audience because it would be disrespectful not to have a full house. <laughs> So I want a lot of people in the audience. King sculpted nearly 400 characters from clay, inspired by those small town circus goers he saw years ago. 
Each diorama took up to three months to create. His favorite, a place that provoked vivid memories, is the men's dressing tent, where performers would wind down, gear up, and let loose. That's his father looking on. To go in there was a riot because they, they'd be cracking jokes and they'd be playing practical jokes on each other, and he didn't want to see a lot of this stuff. <laughs> And what started as a small tribute to his father has become a popular exhibition, says museum director Marina Roshetska. The essence of folk art is storytelling. And you can't look at a diorama and not wonder who are these people, who is in the audience, who are their performers. You almost get drawn into and hear the excitement and smell what was going on in the circus. Sonny King discovered he was not meant for the circus life. Instead, he found his way to America as a part-time painter and full-time graphic artist for film and television. And at age 67, he's found a second career in his dioramas. His father, Mervyn, died in 2003 at the age of 95. Generations of Australians remember Mervyn King. And thanks to the son, who never forgot, now others can catch his act, one scene at a time, under the small top in Los Angeles.